What's going on, everybody? How are we doing? It is your boy, Joel Cupcake, and I'm back for another episode of Joel Cupcake Unedited Live. I got a guest. You know it. The headset's on. You all know what that means if you've tuned in enough by now. And if you've never tuned in, fucking welcome. What's going on? I'm Joel Cupcake. I do this vlog series that's also a podcast. I call it a vlogcast. I know that's cheesy and makes no sense, but I'm old as fucking dirt, so it's fine. Um, you know, I've been doing this. Uh, this is, I think, my 31st or 32nd episode. Um, and uh, let's fucking party. You know what I mean? Uh, I have guests from all over the music industry, some that, f- that fade into wrestling, some that fade into royalties. I've done it. I've, you know, managers, producers, band guys, everything. You know, I've even had like some road crew dudes on here. It's tight. It's fun. It's sick. Uh, yeah. And I'm the host, Joel Cupcake, and it's my channel and I do whatever the fuck I want. And it's all unedited. I don't go back. Nothing gets fixed and nothing gets changed. It's me real and raw. And it's my guests real and raw. Uh, thanks for tuning in. <clears throat> Just uh, real quick to plug some shit out. Uh, I do have some merch live now. It's in the description. Um, you know, at the bottom of the video. So feel free to pick like a mouse pad or a shirt or a coffee mug up from the show. If you, if you want, if not, no biggie. I just appreciate you watching and downloading and listening. It's tight. Uh, if you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. Uh, you can find me on Twitch. I'm starting to record most of these episodes live on there. That's just sw- twitch.tv slash Joel Cupcake. Um, you know, uh, please hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, I have a Facebook page as well you can like. Uh, all of this is linked in the comments. I don't know why I'm drowning you out. Uh, exciting episode for me today because all of you have seen every episode with these, this green headset and it's getting retired. I upgraded. So after this episode, I'll have a new one. Um, <clears throat> anyways, we are going to take a nice little trip down Tech Death Lane today. That's right. Uh, my guest is a friend of mine uh, named Travis Bartosek from the band Abiotic. Um, I know Travis for many, many years. Our journey together started when he was a young lad in a young band. Um, so let's get him on in here and we will get fucking started. Travis. Hello. My fucking main dude. Dude, I woke my cat up by saying hello to you. So let's go, baby. Oh, poor, Uh poor. Is his name Garfield? I'm just gonna call him Garfield. Dude, actually, her name is Ginger, but the fact that you used a G name uh, and she loves carbs, so Garfield it is. You can call her Garfield. Oh, that's, that's fine. Female Garfield, dude. Female <laughs> Garfield. I, I love it, dude. I love it. Uh, well, hey, well, what's going on, dude? Thanks for fucking joining me today, brother. Dude, I'm. It, dude, things are good. I mean, quarantine sucks, but I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, the world sucks, but, you know, it is what it is. Bro, I know, and it's hotter than hell. Like, okay, we pay a good amount of money to live in California, and it was a hundred degrees out yesterday, and I didn't see the sun. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm yeah, so mad at Mother Nature. Well, we had like no warning about those tropical storms either, and like now everywhere is all smoky and hazy, and it's ash, and it's unsafe to breathe down here because that all that lightning lit a bunch of shit on fire. You know Dude. what I mean? And like, like hundreds of. I think it's up to over a thousand people have had to like evacuate their homes and shit like out in like the, the mountains of Salinas and stuff, dude. Like Ugh. it fucking sucks. And then just a couple years ago, you guys had all those crazy floods down there. Like at least I know it like Santa Cruz. So yeah, you can't catch a break. Nope. Nope. It's like, what the fuck are we paying for? And like, I live in an older building. I live close to the water. So we don't have AC. Like I was telling you, uh, you know, prior to starting the live video, but like, still, it's fucking hot as fuck, and I'm fucking miserable. I'm pretty sure I lost fucking like seven pounds just on Friday and Saturday from sweating. Oh, dude, but you probably, your skin probably looks so good. I can tell from the video right now, your skin looks great. So I mean, you know, I am the I am like the peak of male sexuality at the age of 34. So hey, like, honestly, this is peak male performance. You know, you don't have to like it, but you have to, you just have to respect it. You just have to respect it. Dude, you're, you're, you know what, Trav, you're a hundred percent right, brother. Like, I love it. I appreciate you so much. That's what I'm here uh, for. Anyways, Travis, so you sing for a band called Abiotic. You also yes. have a side project called The Undying. Yes. Um, you know, but that's not where your journey began. No, no. It, uh, I met you. I met you when you were singing for a band called As Artifacts. But I know there's a story before that, and that's what I want. 
I want to know like little peen Travis, like little Ween, little weenie hut junior Travis. Like, how did you get into metalcore or heavy music or whichever? I don't I don't know exactly which genre you assimilated to first. So um, I didn't really listen to music growing up. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't until I got into middle school. Um, I had a friend. His name is Fernando Becerra. Okay. And we had we had a class together. And he wrote down on a piece of paper because his brother played in a death metal band, uh, a local a local death metal band called Eviscerated. Oh um, yeah, okay. And so, it was like two thousand four, two thousand five, somewhere around there. Um, he wrote down on a piece of paper. He put Dimmaborger, Suffocation, and Behemoth. He wrote those three names down. So I listened to. Suffocation, Abomination Reborn, and then I listened to Slave Shall Serve by Behemoth. Uh, I remember I like closed my I closed the computer really quick. I was like, no, no, I don't oh I don't know how to feel about this. This is crazy. But I kept yeah. going back and I kept getting drawn into it. And I I kind of fell in love with it. My dad had listened to like Metallica and Slayer and Corn and the Exploited and Dead Kennedys yeah. and Operation Ivy. But I I fell in love with like your dad listened to that. Is that what you just said? Yeah, that's so tight. O- Operation Ivy, especially, is like one of my favorite punk bands of all time. And like I was super into punk when I was a kid, and um, I fell in love with death metal. I just fell in love with like the brutality behind it. And then yeah. um, I I started trying to like get into like going to shows because Fernando was like, "Hey, come see my older brother play." So we went to an eviscerated concert at uh, Colorblind Studios. And oh, jeez, haven't heard that name in a while. And it was just like the most insane thing I ever saw. And then we saw All Shall Perish at Red House in like 2007. Oh, that's so tight. Um, and I actually kind of just I just fell into it. That was just what it was. I went yeah. to I went to the Brutalator in 2006 with the Faceless Animosity Beneath the Massacre. And um, I don't remember. The, I don't remember the other band. I don't remember the other band. But I remember. Uh, Why can I not? Was it conducting? I don't, I don't know if it was conducting. It was somebody. I would have to look it up. Um, and that might have been like the, one of the big first big tours the Fex got to do. Because um, as Blood Runs Black, that was it. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. And. Um, I found out about Whitechapel that night and I went home and I had never heard of a band with breakdowns and like blast beats. And I was like, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. Um, and so that's where my musical journey started. Uh, I met some kids uh, in my hometown that, well, that was actually to start. I met some kids from San Ramon and Danville and we played in a band called plague the system. And we went to go record like a three song EP and I was getting a scuba diving license that same weekend. I didn't so know. I, could, I didn't even know you've ever had a scuba diving license. Travis. Yeah. I am a, I am a certified scuba diver technically. Hmm. And interesting. Uh, interesting. Okay. Um, and so I got kicked out of my first band at 16. Tight. Uh, uh, and then I found some kids in, uh, in Concord where I'm from Concord, California. And they played in this band called to whom it may concern. And it was like a screamo, like singing, screaming. And I was like, I always wanted to play death metal because I'd listened to like Nile and Dima Borger and Behemoth, yeah. and Cannibal Corpse. Yeah. But I, but I, I didn't know how to do vocals like that. I didn't know how to. I didn't know anybody who knew anything about that. So yeah. I joined this like screamo band, and then we started out as To Who It May Concern, changed our name to He Said She's Dead, and there's like videos on the internet, and they're they're terrible, like. 15 16 year old me 17 year old me yeah. terrible um then uh he said she's dead broke up and a couple of us joined a, a friend's band from the same area called sink the ship and sink the ship was I like an, that. was like an attack attack cover band yes i remember and so we joined sink the ship and then we kind of uh, like that's going on Dude, there was so much. There were so many crowds going on. So much crowd part. There's actually a video online uh, from a show in like 2010 or something 
where I was like, you need a fist pump it just like Jersey Shore. Like, yeah. It's a classic Travis, Travis line. Like. Dude, classic. And, um, and then Sink the Ship, we kind of like changed our styles to be a little more like metalcore. Yeah. Uh, and then we changed our name to As Artifacts. Yes. And, and this is when I met you. This is when you met me. I actually, the first time I ever met you was February 7th, 2009 at the Santa, because I know this because it was my birthday. It February 7th is my birthday. I met you at the Vets Hall in Santa Cruz because Despised Icon was playing. Oh, yeah, that show. The Plasma Rifle, Plasma Rifle, Nerexus, uh, Beneath the Massacre, and uh, Carnifex. Carnifex. And then Turok opened that show, but it wasn't Turok. It was a. Uh, Destroy the, the Colossus. Destroy the Colossus. Yes. Because Destroy the Colossus used to be Turok, but Turok had like a cease and desist from the game Turok, and so they had to legally change their name or yes. something like that. Yes. Yes. So that was yeah. Yeah, that show was fucking fun as fuck. You know oh, what? And that, that's funny. I, they, I'm, I'm like shocked you like remember like the day you met me. Like you're probably the only person besides like maybe like <laughs> Parker and little Joel that like remember that. Like most people can't get that. And I think Jared Dillon might remember like when we like met for the first time. Um, it def- I think it was just because it was my it was my birthday. Yeah, and, that's like, true. It was your birthday. Beneath the Massacre and Despised Icon were like two of my favorite bands. And like I bought a Beneath the Massacre like zip up hoodie. And it was like the sickest show ever. And I was you know, like, I, that was like, even to this day, like I, I have like five shows that's just stay in my memory as like my top five shows, whether they were the funnest or the best shows I've ever thrown or whatever. And that's, that one's always on the list. Dude, it was, it was the sickest. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, you and I like got to like know each other when I was in as artifacts. Um, Which then- is funny because I know that the band, I wasn't the, there was all there, there was multiple people running pen up at that point in time. Like we were like a big team. Um, yep. And I know that certain members of your band had, did not have a good relationship with the company when we started working together. And then yep. I met you and I was like, Travis is chill. Like who's the, who's the fucking D bag in that band? You know what I mean? Like, Oh yeah. It was a, it was definitely that weird period of time where we were all like 18, 19 years old and everyone was like, either had like a, like I had a huge ego or like we were super mad because other bands were getting these opportunities that we weren't yeah. getting it was super mad. Well, you know what? And at that age though, like every, that happens with everybody. It's like, I swear it's like, Oh, if you decide to play music and you're a kid, like the age you turn 19 is the time you're like, I'm going to go beef with my local promoter. Cause I'm not getting what I want. You know oh. what I mean? Like I'm so used to it now. It's just, I just, I just laugh. You know what I mean? I just shrug it off. But you know, I mean, but then again, at that point in time, like I feel bad, like looking back on it as like one of the dudes that ran pinup because there were so many good bands from the Bay and there just wasn't enough tours coming through. Like I couldn't, we just could not facilitate to everybody. Dude. And it's so crazy because I think um, joining a band from Florida really opened my eyes to how like lucky we are to live in this area because Abotics like originally from Miami tours yeah. don't go to Miami. They don't go yeah. to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Like once in a blue moon, like mm-hmm. they have to go to Tampa. They have to go to um, Jacksonville. They have to yeah. go up to Georgia. Like they just don't show up here. Orlando, barely. Yeah. And, you know, realizing that like we may not have had it. You may not have had enough tours, but wow, we are so fortunate to be in an area where everybody wants to tour. Like yeah. the, the Bay Area is a part of everybody's tour list for the most part. No, 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 not even for the most part. It, it is, you know, like there's, still, I still deal with like the naive ass people, Travis, that think fucking that California is big enough that like, you know, I, you'd be surprised at the number of times I get hit up for a tour and people are like, Oh, we want to play like San Francisco and San Jose. Can you do both shows for us? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, you want to, you want to what? Like, they're like, wanna- yeah, we- they're like, we want to play like, yeah. Or then, or my favorite is the people that are like, well, we wanted to play like, you know, like Oakland, San Jose, Santa Cruz. Like, that's fine, right? Like, we've heard all three of those scenes are popping. And I'm like, I'm like, this isn't the MySpace days, dude. Like, you can't do that. Like, that doesn't work. Like, it's, it's not a thing anymore. Like, the only part of the, the world where, where that works in America is like, 
you know, the, the area around like, you know, Jersey, Philly, New York, because it is all pretty close to each other, but it's hella traffic. And, and then like Southern California and that's it. Like every, all these other states, like, you know, NorCal's like, you know, you come here and you play, maybe you play like Fresno, Sacramento and the Bay, but you're never going to play like Fresno, Sac, the Bay and the South Bay. Like that's just never going to happen. No. Which, Which is cute. Like, I respect people are like, well, I drove all over California. I want to do all this stuff. We'll just schedule a fucking day off and be a tourist. And there's so much stuff to do here. Like, there's yeah. so much stuff. Seriously. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. But, well, so anyways, yeah. So, like, you were in As Artifacts. You and I became friends. I know we tried to do some, like, cool stuff together. And then I know you guys, I don't really, you know, if you, I know you guys had a falling out with a couple members or the band just kind of fizzled out and how, how did the, how did the, how did the transition from as artifacts to abiotic happen is what I'm is that's the the pot of gold I want from you so um I was so I was in Santa Cruz California um, in the Santa Cruz mountains at my ex-girlfriend's house and we were moving stuff into her house into this new place that she was living and I get I get a call from Rob Maramonte who Fuck uh, that guy. No, just right? kidding. <laughs> love um, you Rob um rob uh plays in a band called moldothra i think that's how you pronounce it yes, and then, um he used he's to be, gonna be a guest on the show eventually uh used to be in fallujah used to be uh all show parish zenith passage zenith passage yeah. and um he's basically a fucking rock star rob also played in eviscerated that i found oh, out shit i did not know that and i had actually seen rob play with eviscerated when i was a kid so it we're all we're all tied together. Yeah, the Bay Area, baby. So Rob is like hitting. He's like blowing my phone up. He's like, "Yo, yo, you, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you." And I'm like, "What do you want, dude? Like, what do you want?" And he goes, "Hey, I have like I have an offer for you. Are you, I'm gonna have you try out for a band." And I was like, "Oh, what band?" And he goes, "Abiotic." He's like, "They're on Metal Blade Records." And I like watched one of the videos. I was like, "I remember when they put out this video for a song called Vermo Sapien." I remember Love that when it, song. Dude, I remember when that song came out. Yeah. So I get in contact with John Matos. Uh, quick plug, fuck John Matos. Um, and I was just on a show like a couple weeks ago. I, I love John. I love I, John I, I so can, much. I can confirm that I do love you, John, but fuck you. And so John... Uh, you can check out his show. That's the Big Shred podcast. Sorry, Travis. No, dude. I, dude, was, I was on there, so I got to, you know... I gotta let the world know, you know. Shame, shameless plug. Same with, uh, yeah, just plug me, baby. Uh, so John hits me up and he's like, "Hey, like Rob told me that you've got like a, you know, sick voice, this and that, this and that. Um, you know, do you have anything? Do you have any recent stuff?" And like a week or two prior, no, it was like a month prior. I had recorded a song with Nick Loicano, who mm -hmm. uh, is a producer at Fang Studios in Redwood City, California or Burlingame, California, technically. Yeah, same difference. Same difference. And that's for my other band, The Undying, that I do with him. And so we had done, and it's like a blackened, technical, death metal, like symphonic, orchestral uh, band. And so I sent him, you know, this this song that I had just done with all these, like, you know, it's, de it's, te it's death metal, it's this and that. And John's like, cool, I want you to record a song. I want you to record, you know, so he sent me a song, um, which actually ended up being the opening song on an album called Casistry that we released. And he's yeah. like, okay, cool. And then he sent me a song to Burgeon and Languish. And he's like, hey, learn the song, do a cover of it. So uh, our buddy Brent Rockwell, who plays bass in The Undying, um, he was like, hey, come over to my house and record in my garage record this cover or it's like in hit like a second garage like upstairs type loft thing so i recorded uh to virgin of languish i sent it in like two two weeks go by roughly and i'm sitting at my ex-girlfriend's house in her bedroom and she was at work and i was like fuck dude i don't think i got the part like i, I, I don't think i got it so i ended up typing out like this super long Facebook message to John, like, Hey bro, like I totally get it. If I'm not the guy, like, you know, just yeah. no hard feelings, this and that, this and that. And all of a sudden I hear like, whoop, 
and it's John saying, you got it. I didn't press send yet. And I was like, what? And then a second message thing pops up and it says, guys, meet Travis, Travis, meet the guys. Yeah. Uh, And I was like, wait, what? Oh, you're not just got put in a band chat. I just, it just got put in a band chat. And I was like, you're shitting me. No, no way. I call up Nick and I'm like, Nick, I fucking got the spot. And we both like freaked out. Cause it's like, holy shit. I'm on a band on metal blade records. Like I've wanted this, my like, since I started listening to music, like what the fuck is going on? Like crazy. Yeah. So I ended up joining Abiotic, and then they're like, Hey, we want you to come out and do a show with us just to make sure that everything's good. But like, if you're good, you're the guy. So I flew out to Florida and the venue got changed the day of the show and it changed by like a 20 mile radius. Um, So we play in West Palm, Florida. Um, I think it was at, um, I think it was this like very tucked away uh, like gay bar in West Palm, Florida. Love it. And I'm just like, this is the greatest thing ever. Like I'm about to play a show in Florida at a a gay bar, a, with a death metal band that I've never played with. And there was like 10 people there. And then people that would like frequent the bar were there too. And it was actually kind of cool because they were like, this is really, this is really sick. Like, I don't know what any of this is, but this is tight. Yeah. And um, I wish I knew the, the, venue's name because i would plug it in because it was it was actually a really nice venue too yeah, really, yeah, yeah really sick and so i played this show and i'm sitting and we played in front of like one of the metal blade reps and like i walked by the metal blade rep and he just kind of like sh- just kind of like shook his head at me and then like didn't say anything and walked away and i was like oh no i blew it i blew it i blew my shot like fuck yeah I go sit down next to Merch and I'm hella bumming. And John is like, You okay? And I'm like, No, dude. Like, I, I don't remember his name. Like, you know, he's, I don't think he liked it. And John is like, Oh, no, he loved it. He sent videos to Slagle and, um, you know, you're good. I was like, Wait, what? He goes, Yeah, no, everyone thinks you're sick. Just, just one of those fucking people that was like hard to read. I was like 22 at the time. Oh, uh, like, okay. Yeah. And it was like, and your balls hadn't dropped yet. So you like, that was your first experience, dude. That yeah. was my first experience. And, uh, it's been, God, it's been six years now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It is, uh, and like, we just finished recording an album. Uh, so then we're going to put out hopefully a new song by the end of the year. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I personally want to do something right before the election uh, because I know that the election is going to be like super, it's, it's obviously very important every year, but it's like super important this year. Correct. And it's like, everyone's going to be very tense. And I think that releasing, um, I feel is our best material by like a thousand times over. is going to be the perfect time. Yeah. Which I'm like, I haven't like shown people. I've showed like two people because they were yeah. with me when they were rec- when I was recording. Yeah. But I've done this whole like I'm gonna keep it secret from everybody. Like I'm super excited. And yeah, I haven't even heard it, which is pretty crazy. Dude, it's I think the quarantine made it as good as it is because our drummer, Tony, who's also our producer, um just takes some Adderall and sits at his computer and makes it sad, makes it sound good. Shreds, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Love it, dude. Love it. That's so tight. Also, I know like you guys took like a little bit of a, of a hiatus, you know what I mean? Um, what was, what was, how, like, how was, how did that go from like, you know, deciding to kick it off and now you're, now you guys are, you know, you got back together last year and now you full blown are doing like another record. Like, how does that feel? How's the, you know, how is the process? Like, you know, like, wh- like if you, if you're, if you can talk about what happened, you know what I mean? Oh, dude, it's actually really funny to think about now. Um, we did a Canadian tour with, uh, in 2016 with this band Vesperia, um, yeah. who are 
some of the absolute sickest musicians I've ever met in my entire life. Like mm -hmm. every single person in that band is just unreal at their okay. instruments, like unreal. And uh, a band called Necronomicon, uh, they're one of like the first black metal bands from Canada, if not the first. Yeah, no, I, know who, I know who they are. And um, so we played the show in Toronto and then we went across the border and we stayed um, at some of our buddy's house in Michigan. And I was laying on the couch in the living room and I get told like, hey, we need to come, to we need to talk to you. It's Matt and John. And they're like, we need to talk to you. And I'm like, okay. So Matt, Matt and John both play guitar for people that don't know. Okay. Um, so I get called outside and they're like, hey, we're going to smoke. And I was like, okay, cool. We'll smoke some weed, you know, blah, 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 blah. And John just kind of goes, we're breaking up. <laughs> like and mid, I, mid blunt sesh or what? dude? Mid, mid sesh. Just like, yeah, dude, it's, it's done. And I I was, know, you know what, John? I don't even smoke weed, but fuck you for killing the vibe right there, dude. Like, I hope you watch this episode, Matos, because, like, that's some fucking – that's some little brain shit, bro. Like, that's dude, not cool, dude. Dude, smooth brain, which is so funny because he he has the biggest brain of anybody in the band. Um, <laughs> Like, it's smooth. It's smooth. Don't get me wrong. It's big, yeah. but it's smooth. Ah, and, okay. okay. And, okay. and I was like, wait, what? And he's just like, yeah, like, you know, the band after this, like, we're done. And I was just like, "Are you, what? And we drove to Ohio the next day. And I like uh, was sitting on the, the second bench seat and the first bench seat is sitting right here. And I like laid my head on top of it like this, the entire drive from Michigan to Ohio. Didn't say a word, got to the venue, don't load anything. I was just a wreck, distraught, the worst. Yeah. Um, and I went to a Mexican restaurant down the street with Alex, our bass player, and we went and had burritos and horchata and it kind of cheered me up because it made, made me feel like I was back home. Yes. Um, so we play this sh and it was, this is all relevant. So we played the show in Ohio and we have the intro starting and I'm on stage facing the drummer and I'm like bawling my eyes out. Like my I have tears in my eyes and I'm like, fuck, I have to play an hour set. Like, right now and i'm crying just yeah like, shit so I, I get through the set and you know talking to people and this kid comes up to me and he goes man i've waited so long to see you guys like i'm so fucking excited to see you guys again like i love your band and i'm just like <sighs> oh right like, in the fucking feels dude Fuck. and i'm just like oh my god this is terrible i think i like gave him a shirt i was just like here Probably. Yeah, knowing you, you probably had like a I know I know how you are. You probably had like one of your little mini mental breakdowns where you just like make no, no sense on planet Earth for like 30 seconds and then you could just gave him a shirt and probably were like blah, 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 blah. like that, that was your way of telling him to just take it for free. Dude, I like started speaking Hebrew at him and he's just like, "What dude?" <laughs> he's like, "Huh? Que pasa?" And um so we get down to there was like a we started getting down to like the top end of Florida and there was these crazy storms. And so like three of our last four shows got canceled. Rough dude. And so the last show we played was with Belfagor, Abigail Williams. Um, uh, and, old, man, old man, Ken. Yep. And I think was, was, was Bryce Butler drumming then? No, dude, this was, this was 2016. Oh, okay. I think Bryce, I, I think Bryce Butler was still in high school. <laughs> oh god bean i love you if you hear this god he has the absolute best the sickest drummer of 15 plus bands yeah. uh he just joined like two more like last week bro dude, i know one to shadow of intent so I mean, he's like at like 17 dude um so we play the show at belfagor and we open up the show and we're going into vermo sapien which is the last song of the set and john like has a mic and he's just like yeah, so this is like the last song, the last time we're breaking up. Uh, have a good rest of your night. We play the song, and then management hit us up, and they were just like, "What's going on? I heard you guys are breaking up." And then we broke up. Um, so I came home to California, and we all kind of like went our separate ways. It and it wasn't like 
it wasn't that we hated each other. It's just, it was, it got too hard because these guys, John, Matt and Alex had been sacrificing their lives for the last, you know, yeah, five years prior to me even joining the band. And sure. like John had a house that he gave up. He had like a motorcycle. He had a career he gave up like to do the band thing. And it eventually Not got what it takes Travis. Right. Just kidding. Just and kidding. like, it eventually well, I'm got not kidding, but I'm not, like, mad, I'm not mad at you. And it eventually got to a point where like all the financial struggle became too hard. Just it literally became like we can't do this anymore. Yeah. So they we broke up and we took a couple years off. Uh Nick and I decided to do the Undying Record, uh, which we're still working on, even though it's done, but we're still working on it. And uh if none of you guys have ever heard Travis's other band, The Undying, if you like black metal, it's fucking sick. Uh, I don't know why it, the record's not done. I'm not going to go there, but it is fucking sick, and you should check it the fuck out. It's Dude, it's cool. I love The Undying. It's like my favorite band. We actually just played, you know, uh, Dan and Sean Mott and I do that listening party like every other Wednesday. Yeah. We, we played one of your guys' songs, and everybody was like, who the fuck is this? Dude, that's because Nick is a genius. Nick is an absolute genius. Um, but the way we got back together is I was working as a car salesman at a Volkswagen dealership in I remember, San Jose. I remember, I remember that, yeah. And I hit up John one day and I was like, John, we should write an album. Like, we don't have to play shows, do, do anything. Let's just write an abiotic record. And... We kind of we kind of put some feelers out. Uh, Matt at first wasn't going to do it; um, it just wasn't in the cards. And then he was just like, "You know what? I'm going to do it." Uh, we recruited Killian uh, from Scale the Summit um, as our bass player, and I like when I say that Killian is one of the most insane bass players I've ever seen. He is one of the most insane bass players I've ever seen in my entire life. He is. Yeah. He is a brainiac. He loves listening to history podcasts on tour. And that dude is just, a, he's a wizard. And uh, he recruit, John recruited uh, a drummer. Uh, his name's Anthony Lusk, Anthony Lusk Simone, or Simone Lusk, whatever he likes to go by. I hate him too. Um, and he played drums in a, he plays drums in a band called Pathogenic. Okay. And, super like proggy and it's like it's groovy and it's super sick and it just like we got like john moved up to boston john got this like crazy job opportunity and he moved to boston and then he got a better job opportunity and he met all these sick musicians in boston and then it's like boom abiotic is back together That's uh, so sick. we we wanted to write a song uh, for our friend Richie um, from Dallas, Texas. And Richie had unfortunately lost his wife. And it was like, let's write a song for him. Let's write a song about, you know, his, you know, his, his widow. And let's, yeah. let, let's do this. And we did it. And it just like, it felt so right. And we just kept writing music. And we did like a comeback tour just because we wanted to like, put the feelers out and it kind of, it went better than we expected in terms of, you know, like, wow, people still care about us. Like this is sick. Yeah. And uh, lo and behold, it ended up getting us on a tour with suffocation and Belfagor uh, this past fall yeah. uh, with Necronomicon. And oh, yeah. Which is funny because it's like, oh, we played our last tour with Necronomicon. We played our last show with Belfagor. Yeah, hmm. and now you're on tour with both of them. Yeah, which was like, it was sick. It's definitely like, it was weird because obviously like Belfagor is a black metal band. Yeah. And we are not by any stretch of imagination. Correct. Correct. But you know what? It was cool. It was super sick. And then we got home and code happened. Yeah stupid right i just want to know why obama didn't have an answer for this oh wait he did yeah yeah i mean you know the funny part is is that like regardless of 
you know, not not to get into a whole entire, you know, uh, like political talk here, but you know, we had a department that could have helped with this, and when they told Trump we were unprepared, Trump got rid of them. So, if that doesn't prove to you that he's unfit to lead and he's a giant fucking baby, uh, well, yeah, then yeah. You, I, I have no other response. You know what I mean for you because. And I, I, I hope that people take what you just said and they don't take it as a personal attack because nobody said that you, random person who may be watching or listening, who may or may not be a conservative or Republican voter, we didn't say that you were a giant piss baby. We said that the president is a giant piss baby. Correct. So. Correct. Yes. He is a giant piss baby. I'm really glad you used that terminology, Travis, because uh, it's fucking true, dude. Um, well, anyway, so so you guys are not on Metal Blade anymore, right? No, uh, we are we are currently on the Artisan era, which is fucking tight. That's uh, um, who owns that label? Uh, Malcolm from uh, Inferi. I almost said Archspire, but I knew that that was wrong. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, and it's just like, you know, the the people that like that label and the people that listen to those bands, like it's crazy how dedicated they are, and I didn't really realize it. It's such a, it's a niche, but all these people are like, you know, if art like an artisan band puts something out, and these people that love these like that love this label are like, I'm gonna listen to this song. If I like the song, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy merch. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do yeah. that, and it's like these people are like the definition of dedicated to this. Yeah. And it is the coolest thing in the world because, you know, from a band perspective, it's like, holy shit, like these people care. And yeah. then when we put out music, it's like, they're the first people that are like, I like this. I like that. Maybe this could have been better, but it's, it's still sick. And it's like, cool. I can, yeah. I can, I can take that information and make the next album better. Mm, true. Yeah. It's it's cool. It's sick. I like we could not be happier. Um, I'm really excited to put out like a, another new song, simply because like I'm excited to um, see what people think and whether they like it or not is it's relevant, but it's not because we like it. Like Correct. we're super, we're super stoked on it, and I hope that people can hear the growth in the music. I agree. I agree completely. I think that that's. Uh... You know, I think every album you guys have done has uh, grown, you know, and expanded and whatnot, and which is which is what it should do and what it should be. You know, um, I like that a lot about your band and you as a person. Um, I mean, I will always love the first Abiotic record because I'm more of like a core kid. You know that though. You know, yeah. um, I would love to see that record be recorded with you on vocals. I think personally, you would like completely fuck like just. You know what I mean? Dude, be I, real I, raw fuckery. I would be super down because my favorite abiotic song is actually a song from that record that I never got to play live. Yeah, and I'm just like, yo, we should do that. There you go, dude. Like, that'd be sick. It would be sick, Travis. You should fucking do it. I got to get on Matos about this. Yeah, I mean, even if just see if Metal Blade would be would be, hey, if we do this, would you? You know, do you? Because I don't know if they still have the rights to it or whatever. You know what I mean? I think they do. I I'm think pretty sure they do, knowing their their generalized contract structure. But just be like, hey, we want to re-release the record with Travis on vocals. Like, if we just do it all ourselves, you guys don't have to pay any money. Will you at least put it out and like distribute it? You know, can't hurt. You know, can't hurt to try. Yeah, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, Michael that, Scott. That's fucking right, dude. Michael Scott's a wise man, dude. Very dude. wise man. Almost as wise as Michael Scarn. Oh, almost. You're getting you're getting wild there, Trav. Dude, I I one could say that I am a uh, a crazy man. You are or, crazy. Man. I could be uh, I could be boarding the crazy train right now. Sick, dude. Sick, very sick. Um, <clears throat> oh, hold on one second. Sorry, dude. You're good. Um. Well, so what is, you know, I've kind of been asking everybody this question. Um, what are you like, 
you know, the pandemic's rough on everybody. We don't need to really have this conversation about any of your mental despair because we've all had a little, you yeah. know, like what is something positive you've gotten out of the, uh, what is something positive that you've gotten out of the, you know, being quarantined, whether it's like you got any reflection, like that, you know, there's, there has to be some good that's come of this. You know what I mean? Um, uh, like I've definitely rediscovered some things that I like and I've been able to work on my personal health like a little bit, dude. It, it's been, uh, I've had a lot more time with my girlfriend. I just moved into my girlfriend's uh, place right before quarantine. So that was actually really good timing. Uh, finished an album. I've had a slew of jobs, um, which has been really nice. So I've been active. Um, yeah. I've been... I go to school for um, IT programming and tech stuff. Yeah. And so I've been getting a lot of work done in that category, um, which is great because I don't know where the touring market is going to be. And I, I want to make yeah. sure I want to make sure I'm prepared and mm -hmm. I want to make sure that, you know, let's say we don't tour for two years. I can get a career going and have money. So that way it's like, Oh, I want to go on tour. Cool. I don't need to struggle. Yeah, like or stress like what the band's getting paid because you'll have money in the bank and your bills are paid while you're on the road. Exactly. I'll have like six or seven months of my bills just like ready to be paid. Yeah. And I won't trip. And yeah, so yeah. I mean, I mean, because like the music industry is not built the way it used to be. Like, you know, back in the day, like I mean, I, I remember like Brandon from Bleeding Three used to tell me, like, you know, they got when they got those, those like, you know, everything after this is love they had huge budgets for because they blew up. You know what I mean? They would just take the full money and they'd spend like a third of it on recording the album. And then they'd all just split it up and tuck it away. So they're like, Oh, so like we literally have X number of months of rent set aside for touring. So that like yeah. the band, so that they, even when they toured full time, cause like, you know, when they were a band, it was very common to do the nine, 10 months out of the year tour cycle. Yeah. You know, um, and fucking, they would put the money, the, like they would just put the money up there so all the members could make their fucking mortgages or their, you know, their whatever their rental payments were a month. And I was like, fuck, that was smart. But like, dude, most labels aren't offering that kind of money anymore. You know dude, what I mean? So it's like, oh, here's here's ten thousand dollars to record an album. Oh, cool, ten thousand dollars. That's like three months of rent. Thanks. Yeah, seriously. Well, especially with you living here. And I know Florida is not, it's not inexpensive, but it's not cheap. And I can't imagine Boston is cheap for John either. No, so. John bought a house. He just bought a car. Um, there you go. Yeah. But he's also, he's a general manager of a dispensary. Like he's fine. Yeah. He's a boss. He's the dad. He, he's band dad. I'm band I'm, mom. He's band yeah, dad. You definitely are. You definitely are. I think that's why we argue so much. I think that's why we bicker. Probably. 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 Like, we're like a married you both, you both want what's best for the kids, but you just always think the other one's wrong. Oh, dude, yeah. I need to make sure that the kids have floss and toothpaste and baby yeah. pop. And he's just like, I need to make sure there's food on the table. And I'm like <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker, I make sure there's food too. Yeah, fair. fair. You, you you do bring home the bacon. Dude, at, as a little Jewish kid, I bring home all the bacon. Oh my god. Because I don't I don't eat it for myself. I give it to my kids. I don't know if you guys have realized this, but Travis is Jewish, as he's pointed out multiple times in the episode now. That's right. Do you not want someone getting mad at me because I like made like a little quip about being Jewish? It's like, no, I actually am Jewish. Like, it's fine. Yeah, it's like, no, you are. I, okay. I'm just trying to clarify that you are indeed Jewish so that no one thinks I'm letting you make weird remarks on my show. Yes. Because yes. we all know that will fucking happen. Because... <laughs> There's still people that don't take the time to get to know me that for some reason don't like me and will always try to crucify me for something. So, which is so funny because you're like a big old teddy bear. It's it's just because people people just take pen up Joel for face value and they think that that's like I'm a one dimensional personality. It's like first off, motherfucker, I'm a Gemini, so obviously I have more than one personality. And like, second off, arsenic productions. That's all you need to know. Yeah. You know, the people that don't, the people that weren't around back then won't won't ever quite get it because back then it was even it was literally just like a couple people throwing shows for their friends and it was just fun and a fucking party and it was just like you know there was a lot less to it because there was also a lot less drama. There wasn't like 
I didn't have to worry about what people were going to say about me on the fucking internet or how people were going to judge the company. It was just like, yo, dude, we're just throwing shots for fun. Everybody chill the fuck out, you know? And now you can't operate like that anymore, unfortunately. Like, there's always some soul, some bullshit attached, you know? So, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I don't fucking know. But, um, but yeah, like the future of the concert industry, how do you feel about some of these like live stream concerts and stuff that have been going on? What's, what's your take on that? Dude, be, honest, be honest. I want your honest. I think it's sick. Um, like I actually want to, I'm going to buy the flesh God apocalypse one. Cause that's one of my bands. I heard that was sick. I did not watch it yet, but and, one, of our, one of our friends, crystal bot squad shout out. Um, you know, she, uh, she fucking said it was fucking sick. And I watched BT Bams when they did colors and it was fucking tight. I'm like, this headset's not good for music. It's fucking sh like shitty. But like, oh. even, even then it was still like this fucking, it was ripping, dude. It was fucking ripping brother. Dude, it was ripping. It was, um, it was, uh, what's, what's it's fire. That's what it was. Oh yeah. It's, these these motherfuckers spitting is that how it goes now is that what I'm supposed to say like I, I think that's what the kids say all you, young, all you young whippersnappers watching feel free to like you know slide into my DMs and say stop saying that stop it stop it, stop it. is this on is this on hello oh stop I, it I love I love the live streaming I think it's great I think if like the abiotic didn't live in the th like three corners of the earth or three corners of the United States, we probably would do it. Uh, yeah, well, there is a way I forget what another band did that. Like they were one of the first bands to do any sort of like live from home thing. And they're all split up and they were able to get like the audio differences like synced up well, but I don't know. I think that requires a lot of like home audio gear. So I'm not really sure if that's possible. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I, kudos to whoever can do that. I think it's great. And especially because, like, people want something at this point. They, they just, they're craving. Yeah. And whether it's playthroughs, whether it's music videos, new music, live streams, like, whatever you can do to, you know, get your, like, get your art out there, I think that's the main thing. Because people right. are, people are just, they're, they're white knuckling. It. they're yeah. like I need this right now like yeah. they're fiending that's the word i'm looking for fiending for there it. Go. yeah 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 and i think that you know if a band has the resources and the means to start writing new music and put new music out do it i get that there are so many bands that probably have like very fucked situations at home and they yeah. can't record music even if they wanted to they just mm -hmm. can't and so like I don't think it's fair to say like everyone should be doing it. I just say you should be doing whatever within your means. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, not everyone is as fortunate as we are to, you know, have a, a, a house or have an apartment or, you know, have gear to do anything with. And, or, I mean, even a significant other that might be in support of that right now, you know, because I'm lucky. Like Trina is very supportive of everything I still do with my time, even though I haven't made a fucking dime since February, you know, since, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, like my girlfriend is at work right now and like her hands look like hers do at her desk. So I can sit here and do this. I look pretty for me. No, no, just kidding. Right. I mean, I start work again in a week, so I don't really Yeah. Care. Yeah. But, it's fine. But yeah. Alex is a doll. So, yeah, you know, I'm super, super fortunate to have a partner. That's like, you need to do this. Like, this is your passion. This is your craft. And not everyone has that. like, not oh, everyone. I mean, like, I know a lot of guys that are trying to do, like, more, more like, Twitch stuff with video games. I know a lot of, uh, we have a lot of friends who are musicians, and, like, sometimes the, uh, the, I'm not even going to say the lady friends, because, you know what, I feel like that's, that, that makes me age myself. You know, like, they're partners. I, like, you know, I should start referring to them as that. Yeah, that is, whatever, whatever that, that is the polite term, you know, these days. So, but sometimes their partners are, like why are you spending all your time doing this or that, especially if it's not making money or furthering your life. It's like, well, you know what? Like it's, there's nothing wrong with being a dreamer. You know, a lot of people these days are like, go save up, do this, do that, buy a house. Like just go, go, go immediately on the, the adult path. And it's like, you know what, dude, if you look at everything scientifically, like the world's ending before we die. Like we're all so, going to die. Well, we're all going to die, but the world's going to probably die. Kill. You know, we're probably going to destroy the earth or it's going to destroy us. 
before the, the end of m most of our natural lifespans anyways. So who fucking, not to be morbid, but like who fucking cares, you know, like live a little for yourself. Like, and you should have hopefully a partner or, or significant other, or, you know, whatever you want to call them. Even if hell, even if they're booty call, they should still support what you want to do to make that makes you happy, you know? And I think what's even, what can be even harder is parents. I think that's the big thing is because like, luckily I don't know too many people whose like significant others don't like support them, but it's the parents, the yeah. parents that are just like, you know, you need to go get a real job. You need to go do this. And like, I'm super lucky personally that my girlfriend's parents are like, yeah, like as long as you work, I don't give a fuck what you do. And I'm like, yeah, sweet. I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, well, and like you know, you are fortunate enough that like Abiotic is a established enough band that like you can come home with me in your pocket from going on to, on the right tours. Yeah, on the right tours, we can definitely come home with money in our pockets. It's the, you know, doing six or seven tours back to back to back, and it's like dealers. Oh, say, say, that, say that again, Travis. You're sorry, your connection froze up a little bit. Um, it's like, you know, it's doing like six or seven months of touring and coming back home. It's like, I have $19 in my wallet yeah. over the last six, seven months. Like, fuck. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the other thing that like, you know, and I think what you've seen and where you've been, you can attest to this better than some, like to an extent you got to fucking like bands don't realize that like, you know, not every tour is going to be the perfect money making tour, but ooh, <laughs> sometimes it's the like, Hey, this is going to put me in front of new people, so we got to take a pay cut, but it's going to help grow our crowd. Or yep. then there's, then there's, you know, fortunately this doesn't happen very much anymore. But sometimes there's the, hey, management's kind of like forcing us to do this, but it'll help us get other opportunities down the line, you know. Yeah. Or, or you know, management or the agent it doesn't have to just be, you know, management's not just the only evil empire. Oh well, hello, beautiful. The puppy just woke up. Sorry. Oh no, that's. Puppies, puppies always come first. It's okay, so go back to bed. It's okay. It's a puppy. Oh, she's sniffing something. So there must be somebody. The neighbor might be. Our neighbors bought a smoker, so they've been barbecuing like every day. Oh, and Bowie's just like. She's probably like, give me that bacon. So. Oh, I just got a text from Brent. Oh well, yeah, yeah. And, and it's him. It's him <laughs> watching. It's him. It's him watching us flipping one of us or both of us off. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I have, I have the comments disabled so that they don't, they don't pop up on the screen to distract us. So. Oh, Oh dude. Thank you. It's, it's nothing, nothing like the big shred podcast, which actually pays attention to people. Ugh. Uh, uh, well, you know, like I, I only, you know, not every episode is live. I'm going to start trying to do more of them live, you know, but um, also, like, because it's recorded and then I post it on YouTube and, and uh, like, all, all the podcasting networks. So it's, like, if I, if we're sitting here responding to a bunch of stuff in chat and we're not reading what we're responding to, it's going to get really hard to follow. Yeah. And, like, so I'm trying to keep it clean for all the platforms. You know what I mean? Look at you. So. Using your using that noggin of yours. It's, how, it's, it's hard. I got to use it for something. You That's know what right. I mean? So, uh, well, word. Well, you know what, Travis, this has been pleasant. I, I learned some stuff about you I didn't know today, and you look quite beautiful with those flowing locks. So, dude, thank uh, you. Let's get to the fun part of, of the of the interview, and then we'll and then you know we'll get ready to wrap it up. Uh, first and foremost, uh, how can everybody that might want to follow or connect with you? How can they do that? It's just oh hey Travis on Instagram and Twitter, right? Instagram, Twitter is oh hey Travis, O H H E Y, then my name Travis. Um, and then on Facebook, you can just Facebook the band Abiotic and The Undying. Um, Abiotic is going to be releasing new content in the next couple of months. And I would like to say The Undying is going to do the same, but uh, that is always subject to change. Well, well now, well, uh, I, I, will, I will speak with your whole band about that later because I want that record to come out too. Yo, so, me too. I've been waiting eight years for this shit. Yes, yes. I'll yell at Nick. It's fine. Um, well, I'll yell at all of you. It's all your fault. But uh, um, one other thing, uh, there's actually uh, two other things that are non-music related. Um, one, uh, fuck the Vegas Golden Knights. 
Oh, there it is. I knew that was coming up at some point in time on this episode. And then uh, two, uh, fuck the Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, oh, yeah. it was a double. It was a double double header. Okay. Oh, it was a double. I th- I would say fuck the Toronto Maple Leafs, but like they already are getting like shit on enough. <laughs> so. Yes, everybody. Travis and I miss hockey so much, and we are San Jose Sharks fans. And if you don't like it, unsubscribe. Fuck it, dude. I don't care. And I think what's I think what's even better is like uh, my personal trainer, which is one of my like closest friends. Yeah. He is a Golden Knights fan. He lives in Nevada. He's a Golden Knights fan. Yeah. And um, I sent him a text after uh, the Blackhawks beat them the other day, and I was just like, I'm gonna I'm gonna like swim in your tears for the next 48 hours until Vegas ends up beating Chicago in five. But like for the time being, like I'm, I'm hoping for that reverse sweep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I'm hoping. Yeah. We'll see but, what happens, but I may, I may talk shit about the golden Knights, but I am very happy they're in the league because it just means that there's going to be more people that watch hockey. Yeah. And then there's going to be more players that mm-hmm. are going to, there's more kids that are going to play hockey because mm-hmm. of a team like Vegas. And then when Seattle comes into the league and, I think that sports rivalry is a lot of fun. Um, I agree. I agree. And we need more of them on the, like, cause like, you know, we're from the Bay. We're always going to be for the LA. So like saying that the sharks rivals are the Kings, sorry, the Queens or um, the fucking ducks. Like that doesn't count, dude. Like if San Diego had a team, they'd be our rival too. Now, like the, the you know, the Vegas Golden Knights and the Krakens, that's a, those will be real rivalries. Cause it's like, this is the fucking West coast. Like we're, we're in it together. But, but, but like, fuck you. Fucking dominance, baby. Fucking dominance. Right. And I think it's also because, uh, like, I'm also really upset with Seattle's jersey. I think it's cool, but at the same time, they could have made it so much more badass. It, yeah, it could have been more badass, but also, like, it's kind of one of those things where, like, how many people really understand what the term Kraken means? You know yeah. what I mean? Like... Because everyone's just going to assume it's something from, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. Because that's how pop culture, because Disney runs pop culture. You know what I mean? Like. I have a Disney tattoo, so I feel that. Yes, exactly. So, I get it, though. I, I was I was, I was, was satisfied with it. You know what I mean? But you know what? It's going to be funny not to not to dig on any of our friends who like, who like uh, Vegas. But, like, they thought they got lucky. Oh, man, that new draft system is is, like, Seattle's blessing up, dude. That's all I have to say. Dude, it. I'm, I'm afraid that Seattle's going to be like hell good, and I'm like, fuck, I can't yeah. deal with this. And they're but getting I, at least one of our good players. Like that's the other thing that sucks is like you know they're swooping somebody from us. Dude, I think Brent Burns is going to look really good in a Seattle jersey. I don't want to talk about that. I can't. I'll start crying on camera. We'll find out. We're going to find out next year. Yeah, we will. You're right. You're right. All right. It's- All right. We got some final questions. First one is the most basic interview question you'll ever be asked, Travis. What's your favorite color? Oh, uh, teal. It's green and Sick. teal, but so green is the the front runner for that answer from everybody. It's green and purple have been have been most of the answers. So, yeah, tight, def- tight. I, I would say I would say definitely teal though. Uh, because, okay, you know obvious reasons. Go sharks. Yep. Um, okay. Okay. Type. Um, what is one? What's your number one tour food that you miss? Oh man, it's kind of funny that I, this is gonna be the answer, but it's ramen. No, I mean I get it. Like, there's there's a few good like, it's just like pizza. Where like on the East Coast, it's different. And like. Every time we go on a bot, it goes on tour. We always try and find ramen. Always. Okay. That's just like the number one food that we always try and find because it's always good. It's always inexpensive. It's always like a, a family owned restaurant. And so we always like going there and the service it's, it's quick, it's cheap and it's always good. Just always. And if you're on tour and you're not feeling good, what do you want? Soup. Ah, no, it makes sense. I mean, you could just go to the next town over to Livermore and just tell Andrew to cook you ramen, and I'm sure he will. Oh, dude, I would love that. Yeah, he's not. He's not that. Him and Jenna are not that far from you. That's oh yeah, because I'm in Pittsburgh right now. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 not. They're their new house, and Robbie still lives with them. They, they're 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 not that far from you. So, I mean, obviously, there's a pandemic going on. So when this is all done, 
when we can all get that, you know, good, good right in our vein to be immune, you know? Yes. I'm ready. Ready, uh, ready for a vaccine. All right, cool. Okay, okay. Ramen, I respect that. I respect that. Um, what's your favorite? Where's your favorite place to go on tour? Fuck. Um, Austin, Texas is definitely up there. Um, we love Austin. Yeah. We love, 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 love Austin. Um, and then second is probably Seattle, actually. Interesting. Okay. I think it's because we always played El Corazon, and I really like the area. Yeah, El Corazon's sick, yeah. yeah. If it's not raining, that part of Seattle is awesome. Oh, exactly. But but yeah. Every, every time I've ever been to Seattle, Ontario, it was fucking raining. So I've just been like... Just like, fuck you, rain gods. Yeah, basically. All right. Okay. I like both those answers. Dude, Austin's getting up there, man. A lot of everybody loves like between the food and then playing come and take it. Like everybody oh, We love come and take it. Anthony is one of like our our boys. Like we yeah. love we love it. Yeah, he oh. is the fucking man. You are right about that. So the I can get behind that. Um okay. It's time. You need to let the world know, Travis. Oh boy. Sheets or Wawa. Honestly, I'm gonna go with sheets. Fuck yes, dude. That's what I'm talking about, baby. I I, I don't remember uh, Josh Slater who plays in a band called Aether. I don't remember if he's a sheets or Wawa person, but I think he's a sheets person. I'm pretty sure he's a, pretty much most of the people that we're friends with that actually have a brain are sheets people. Yeah. So I know I have one band that I manage that's just like they're all Wawa kids, and I'm just like, just don't talk about it, dude. Just right? don't talk about it. Do they? <laughs> the only time I've almost ever dropped a, dropped a band was because at first they told me they were all Wawa kids, and then after that they said that they'd rather go to Denny's than a Waffle House. I almost I've literally never almost dropped a band for a personal reason until that moment in time. Okay, like <laughs> <laughs> I can just see, I can see how fucking pissed you are right now, like because I know you well enough. Like you're very mild mannered, but like I can just see it in your fucking face. How do you pick Denny's over Waffle House? Waffle House is an actual staple for a national emergency. Don't know, bro. I don't know. They use Waffle House as a as a level of how fucked are we during this natural disaster? If Waffle House is closed during a natural disaster, you need to leave. <laughs> I love that. If, if anybody who doesn't believe me, if you Google Waffle House, um, something about like na like uh, like national tragedy or like government, uh, fucking actually here, because I'm on a laptop, I can do this. Oh, and no. This is incredible. Let's see here. The Waffle House Index is an informal metric named after the Waffle House restaurant chain is used by the Federal Emergency Management Agency to determine the effect of a storm and the likely scale of assistance required for disaster. What so, the fuck? The index has three levels based on the extent of operations and service at the following at the restaurant following a storm. Green, full menu. The restaurant has power and damage is limited or no damage at all. Yellow, limited menu. No power or only power from a generator or food supplies may be lie. F food supplies may be low. Red. The restaurant is closed, indicating severe damage, severe flooding, or a pandemic. That's insane. I did, literally thought you were fucking with me right now, and nope. then you just read me that. Nope. I don't remember who told. Can you send me? Can you send me that that link so that I can put it in the in the description of this video so people can say that we're not just pulling this shit out of our ass? Yeah, it's actually a wiki link too, which is my favorite part. That's hella funny. Boom. Thank you. I appreciate you. That's insane. Yeah, that's insane. I don't. I, that's a, I learned that on tour. I don't remember who told me, but I didn't believe them as well. I was like, "No, you're fucking shitting me." And yeah, that's insane. I did not know that. I, I've I learned a couple things today. Holy shit! Hopefully, so did some of the listeners slash viewers. Um, okay. Um, you're just like mind blown right now. You know? I am, dude. You, I totally derailed my mental train of thought, dude. Like that's, I'm fucked up, dude. Like, 
in the best way possible. Um, okay, the, the other one, this is the other one that's tough, dude. What a burger in and out, dude. Okay, which is really funny because I think they're both disgusting, but I will pick um, in and out. Okay. You get a pass for that answer. You started you started with the wrong answer, but you get a pass because you 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 ended with the like there are a few things off Whataburger's menu that I would eat and I'll be yes. okay with it. Um, I think Whataburger has a more diverse menu. I well, yeah. But I think that In N Out having a smaller menu it is a testament to the fact that like how plain and boring our taste buds are in California. Correct. And I, I don't know if you've seen the video, but it's just these two dudes are sitting in a car and they're talking about in and out. You don't, you haven't seen it because I can tell by the look on your face. No. I'm going to send it to you and you can plug in that clip in the video. Cause it's so fucking funny. And these dudes are just talking about in and out and it's so accurate in and out of sick for like uh, animal style fries. Yeah. No, that both restaurants have to be fair. Like both restaurants have things they do well, and I, there's things that I like in, in both. You know what I mean? So, but I get it. I get it. Um, I would pick Taco Bell over both of them. Okay, there you go. That, that's a real answer. That's what I wanted. I would get my two bean burritos from Taco Bell, light on the onions, and a cup of water, and I'm good to go. Okay. Okay, I can respect that. Yeah, that's actually what I get is that, dude, try when you order those bean burritos with no, no onions, say that you want them grilled. Yeah, it'll change your fucking life. You're welcome. Like, it's a new taste palette. Like, they're, they're grilling because, like, you know it's one of those places where they're not sitting there and they're not scraping off the top part of the griller. So, like, you get, like, a, a mirage of burnt flavors on to a mirage. Why did I say fucking mirage? Dude, I'm out of it, dude. Like... A myriad of just like myriad. Uh, That's the word I was going for. But we're we're out of coffee, so I didn't have coffee today before our thing. That's why I've been kind of like, Duh. so yeah. But dude, I don't even. I don't even drink coffee. That's how much of a sociopath I am. Well, I mean, I've always known you're a fucking sociopath. No cap. Uh, no cap. No soda, baby. Hey, that's. I'm. I'm trying to get. I just did a diet for a while for like a month. I lost twelve pounds, and it helps you cut. All the fake, like it's like no, no preservatives, no, no sugar, nothing acidic, no booze, no coffee, and like I lost twelve pounds. It like helps reset like your gut health and a, and a lot of like your cravings for fast food and all the shit that you don't need because you cut out all this, all the extra sugars. It, it, it was tight, so now I'm like, every once in a while I still like just go get a fucking Dr Pepper because fuck it's Dr Pepper. Like you know what I mean? You can't. You're an adult. You can. Yeah. No, I can't. I actually, I'm a Mount. If I, if I'm gonna drink soda, I am a Mountain Dew person. I respect that. Um, it's because you're still like a little like nerdy kid at heart. That's why, and oh, that dude. is that is the fuel of the nerd. Like I don't care what anyone says. If they're like, I play video games. I don't like Mountain Dew. Well, you can get the fuck out of America then, because that ain't red, white, and blue, baby. That's right. You know what I mean, the white on the flag is actually a Mountain Dew green. It's just. We've all drank so much Mountain Dew, we can't see the color spectrum anymore. Exactly. Like that's, that's that's literally what it is. <laughs> that is, I <laughs> have you ever heard something that's such an undisputable fact that it like it seeps into your your soul? Because that's what you just did. I mean, I'm inside you, essentially. Yeah, that's where our, what I, I had like I was going to build up to it, but I just wanted to come out swinging and just say I'm inside you. No, and the thing is, like, it's not the first time, and it will not be the last. <laughs> this is where everybody immediately just stops listening to the episode. <laughs> Good. Oh Good. My God. That would mean oh they got. God. That would mean they spent six. That would mean they spent sixty-eight minutes listening to us. Yeah. Before, and then I love it's, it. and then it's just like you know what, you know they're they're talking about being inside each other. This is where I draw the line. Good. You know, well, if that's what it takes for people to get to turn tune out of my show, then I made it like tw I made it like thirty one episodes or some shit like that. That's fine. I'm not tripping, dude. You have an episode. If you had an, if each one of your episodes was a year, it would be older than me. I know, but it's still younger than myself. That's true. Because I'm getting up there. You got that. You got that Dilf thing going on. You know, you got the you got the salt and pepper in the beard. Like it's 
Yeah, I, I like to tell people that I'm George Clooney in the moonlight. That's what I like to tell people. You know, like <laughs> one of my uh, one of my old bosses said I looked like Zach Galifianakis when I had shorter hair, and I was just like, man, that is an insult. I was gonna like, say, is that even a compliment? Like, I was just like, damn, dude, like. I don't look anything like him. I'm offended for you. I actually know. I worked with a guy who looked exactly like Zach Galifianakis. Poor bastard. Oh, he is a, well, he's a poor bastard. who has a lot of money, but he is still a poor bastard. Oh man. Oh man. Okay. Travis, you asked I, for all this. I know. No, I love it, dude. I'm, I'm very happy you, you did the show with me, man. I, I, I love it. Um, before I ask you the final question, um, uh, can you – are you allowed to say when the new record's coming out? Uh, there is no date right now. Yeah, I figured. I know most of the labels are all kind of – because of what because of COVID, they're all just like, well, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> well, like we wanted to – like the original plan like four months ago was release it before the election. Yeah. But now it's like mm, – the, the election is it, it, not a good idea. Just not a good idea. Yeah. So probably early next year. I would okay. say probably like January, February, March, somewhere in that region. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair. Fair. Um, well, okay. So this this is this last question, and I'm actually very excited to ask you this personally. Um, because I ask all my guests this, and I feel like it's a good like, you know, the show is called Joel Cupcake Unedited. Like I want people to get to know it's not just about abiotic, it's about you. You know what I mean? Like, fuck abiotic, honestly. Especially John. You know, like especially John. God, yeah. You know what I mean? Like this, this up. You know, I, we got a little peek inside your past, your humor, some of your opinions. You know, like I love it. Like, so the final question I ask everybody is: Is there something that you wish more people and or your fans knew about you? You know, so like for example, like. I'm not saying that you're one of those people that like your stage face and like when you're on tour, like they get a different Travis, you know, I'm not, I don't think you're a person that does that a lot. Um, you know, but like sometimes like the way we behave on the internet or the, the things we do show the people that follow us and connect with us online is not a full representation. Full, yeah. Full representation of who we are. Like for me, for example, like, you know, you've been to my place. I own a shit ton of books. Do you know how many times people come over to my house and see a full bookshelf and they're like, you can read? And like, yeah, they're like half joking, but they're also like, oh, we didn't know that you were big on reading. You know, yeah. like like there, there's, you know, I have a few other things obviously about me that like a lot of people don't fully understand, you know, but like, that's not the point, you know? So what is that about you? Um, and don't say working out because you put that on your, your fucking social medias, motherfucker. Uh. I would say that people don't realize that I'm as like empathic and as emotional as I am. Um, I think that when it comes to being like sensitive, like a sensitive human being and uh, being very aware of the emotions of the people that surround you. Yeah. I, I definitely feel like I am very like sensitive in that fashion. Um, okay especially being in like a death metal band and the death metal scene. And yeah. I'm very open about like how I feel towards mental illness. And I, oof, I think that if more people understood that, like you can still be this, like, you know, whether you want to be like an alpha male or you want to be like a man and you want to be big and tough and strong, like, you can still be sensitive. You can still have emotions and you can still process things on a level that it doesn't make you weak. Yeah, like, you know, I agree. what makes you weak is not confronting your emotions. And I, I think agree. that conf confronting your emotions is great. And I wish that people that listened to this style of music, um, not even that, because I feel like there's a lot of people within death metal that do do this, but I, I wish that more bands would write about topics that were a little more personal, especially within this genre. Um, obviously you listen to hardcore. I've listened to hardcore and pop punk and, you know, the emos scene and everything. And 
you know, all the, the lyrical content behind all of it is very personal and it's very real. And with death metal, you get a lot of like kill murder, uh, or if you're Nile, uh, Egypt. Um, I wish that more bands would look at, you know, social issues and their own emotions. And so that way younger kids can listen to it and go, man, I can connect to that and do more than just connect to the riff, connect to the words that are being said. And so I think that most people may not realize that with, you know, abiotic and my own self is that I, I pay very heavy attention to lyrics and lyrical concepts. Mm -hmm. And I think that within the genre of metal lyrical lyricism needs to be more thought out. Yeah. And you know, it all, literally all I'm saying is like we can write more than trying to be like Cannibal Corpse. Cannibal Corpse is Cannibal Corpse. They can do whatever the fuck they want. Yep. And I think that a lot of bands. I forgot that their, their first record turned 30 this year. Right? That's Fuck insane, me. dude. Like, I forgot that they've been around that long. It's, dude. And I, I hope that the, I hope that death metal goes on for another 30, 50, 60, hundred years. I hope that when I'm 90, I'm listening to death metal. And I'm like, fuck man, I can't believe kids are still doing this. Like, yes. Yeah. That's I, yeah. But I think uh, just being like um, sensitive to, you know, other people's emotions and I care a lot more than I might put on. I'm working on getting out of being an asshole. I used to be a really big, like super, not PC, super offensive, thought all that stuff was great. And now that I'm older, it's like, man, I can't do, I can't be doing that anymore. That's stupid. That's right. I, I used to do like a lot of the shock factor humor. Like that was like, I, I thought all that stuff was like super fucking entertaining without realizing that like, it is kind of offensive to some people. And now and I know, now I look back on it. And I'm like, dude, like the fact that I even ever used to make that joke is like really upsetting, you know? D- I can only imagine how many people I've met in my life that like maybe that I was the person that ruined their day because of something I said. Yeah, you, you definitely used to be an asshole, but you you weren't ever really one to me, so I didn't really give a shit. But like, I yeah. was I was that kid. I was that offensive. Like I thought it was funny and I thought it was the best thing in the world. It's like it's not, and I think that people, if you see that somebody used to be a certain way. And then you can clearly see that they've changed or that they're in the process of changing when it comes to certain things. Like you don't need to ruin their fucking life about it. Like everybody, everybody has to grow at some point. It's the people that refuse to grow. Yeah. Well, I touched on this in one of my earlier episodes, like the count, like the, the cancel culture thing. Like I don't want to really talk about it very much, but like, I think, I think the culture in itself with some things is ineffective. Like, pedophilia and rape and that stuff fuck those people they should rot that's it there is no second chance yep. but you know some of the other stuff that people are getting canceled and called out for it's like dude like when i was young like i got shot down all the time by women and because i had never really had a successful relationship like after high school like i didn't know how to talk to girls for a long time and like you know, people, I don't think people, some people don't factor that in. Like, yeah, oh, yes, of course, there's being like, you're being disgusting or like a pervert. But then there's guys that when the, the chicks are like, oh, like he was creepy and weird and like wouldn't leave me alone. And it's like, well, dude, if you didn't tell him straight up to leave you alone, like he might think what he's doing is getting, is working. You know, like, it's a, there's it's also a very- like, like, you know, crucifying people for jokes and shit that they did five, 10 years ago. Or like one time I heard somebody say this, like, dude, like I was a fucking, piece of shit compared to, to to me like me 10 years ago compared to now you know like for sure like i'll admit it like that's yeah. i think it's dumb like i've i've changed i mean you've known me a long time you've known i've changed a lot over the years like yeah i'm, I'm kind of more mellow now i'm definitely more like caring and sensitive and i'm definitely more like i don't want to say i'm more pc because that just sounds counterintuitive but like i'm like way more respectful of the people around me and my surroundings than I used to be. Like I've always been a good hearted person. I feel like, you know, but, but, but the delivery wasn't there. And I think we, we, yeah. we definitely grew up in a time period where I wouldn't say these things were acceptable, but they were definitely um, more normalized. Yeah. And I think that one of the things that 
I do appreciate about, you know, whether people want to call it cancel culture or whatever, is that people are just pointing out like, hey, we've all been really shitty. Like 10 years ago, me, terrible, awful. Yeah. I grew up with, you know, racist ass parents. I grew up with shitty parents. Yeah. Like I'm very fortunate that I'm 28 and I was able to get out of all of that. Yeah. Agreed. And, you know, I think that it's our responsibility as we get older to, you know, be more aware of our surroundings and be aware of the fact that, you know, there are people that, that are, that are hurt by these things. And so don't do them. It's yeah. clear. And I think it's, it's never been more clear than it is today. You know, if somebody, if somebody says that what you were saying is offensive, you do not get to tell them, no, it is not. Correct. You exactly. tell you, you apologize for what you did and you, you, learn from that mistake and yeah. you just don't do it again. The one thing I will say I don't mind about the, the some of the call out stuff is like there are people in every circle. It does not matter your industry, what you do, your religion, your creed, whatever. In every circle, there's always like people that are like untouchable and like the culture has does not care who you are. You know, like I'm glad like there are definitely some people like celebrities like that whole argument where like they don't ever use their voice for good but then they're still, they'll still fall victim of cancel culture. And that's almost like karma to me, to some people, you know what it's I mean? It's just like, dude, you had an opportunity to clear yourself and you didn't. So good job. Yeah. But then again, you know, the celebrities and everything, that's an entire other fucking. Well, yeah, of course. But that's, that's a uh, dude. I could go forever and a day on that, but I also, you know, I'm not Pizzagate or QAnon. I'm not like a tinfoil hat is not on. Oh, dude, my tinfoil hat's always on, dude. You're talking to Boomer Joel right now, dude. Oh, dude, that's right. I forgot. You're an 80s baby. You're a boomer. Yeah, dude. 86, brother. Oh, man. God. Yeah, because I'm 92. Fuck. Yeah. 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 I know we're not addressing the chat, but uh, Josh Slater just said, oh, saw it was Travis. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> About watching the live the live thing. So Yes. That makes me so happy. Oh fuck, God, fuck, dude. dude. I've uh, toured with I've toured with Josh a couple of times and made his life hell. So I don't blame you, him. You, you, you know what? You indeed have. You indeed have. Um, for all you just now joining us on the live portion of the stream, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, I'm Joel Cupcake. I do a live uh, vlog and podcast interviews with dudes from bands. This is Travis from Abiotic and the Undying. If you don't know who he is, check out his fucking bands. They're sick. Um. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for thanks for checking this out. Uh, we're basically at like the end of the interview, so like I kind of feel bad that you guys are just now here, but uh, it is what it is. What it is what it is. So uh, this some will be. Oh, go ahead. I say some people were procrastinating about getting here. That's what you yeah. get for showing up late. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Um, but yeah, everybody. So I have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's at the bottom of my Twitch page. If you're reading that, um, feel free to feel free to scope that out. For those of you watching at home on, uh, you know, on Twitch, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, when it, when you watch this on YouTube, or if you listen to it in, on any of the podcast mediums, um, I am going to start doing more of these live on Twitch. So make sure you follow me. Uh, I don't I don't ever really announce. When I'm going live, just the software I use enables me to go live on Twitch and record at the same time. So that's what I'm going to start doing. So you should follow me. Um, yeah. Thanks, everybody, for, for swinging by, for hitting the follow button, hitting the sub button, whatever whatever you're doing. Uh, Travis, thank you for joining me. Dude, uh, always. What's, uh, what's uh, you know, I feel like I always ask an industry question, and I forgot with, with you. Um, so, you know, you've bounced around between a few bands. Uh, you know me as well. Um, you know, you've seen some the bad side of the music industry and some of your previous experiences. You've also been like uh in a band full of like ego dudes and you bit off more than you could chew. So like I feel like you've made your own mistakes too. So like what's like your number one piece of advice you can give people in the music industry that are trying to like make their own way? You know, what's what's your number one piece of advice? Uh the number one piece of advice is make sure you have something outside of music. Make sure that you do not put 100% of your cards into music, especially Interesting. now. Interesting. I think that, um, like, reason I'm saying is I'm going to school for IT. So that yeah. way, if 
I want to, if touring is good, I can go tour and I can still do my job on the road. But yeah. if tour, if I can't tour anymore because touring stops, what am I going to do? I don't yeah. want to be, you know, 35, 36, 37 and being like, holy fuck, what am I doing with my life? Well, I'm 34. What the fuck am I doing in my life? You uh, more than me. Um, yes. uh, but I think the second thing is uh, always openly communicate with your bandmates and never try to never try to rip off somebody else's sound because it's going to be glaringly obvious. Yeah. Um, which is mildly ironic because we definitely rip off Gojira, but I don't care. At least yeah. we can admit it. But I think always having like a side thing, like never put all of your eggs in one basket with whatever you do. Fair. Fair. I like because that. You, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a, I had a guest, I had a guest a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about how it's like, it's, it's better in my opinion for you to learn. Like I like when the bands come through and I find out at home, they work for a promoter or the big or live nation or whatever, because then it's like, you have not only do you have a backup, but you understand every side of the table. And like, that will help you will get farther if you get how it works. Like, I know with you sometimes you're like I don't deal with that management deals with that but that doesn't mean you don't you don't understand the things being brought to you because yes. if you at least understand like that's just you know it's going to be safer if you're not 100% relying on other people you know yes and that that also includes you know fucking having a backup plan because then you're not just reliant on the band and your bandmates and all that shit dude because you never know it's like you could be as big as Whitechapel one day and then the next day, just people to stop caring. Like yeah. you just, you never know what's going to happen with people. And you never want to be like in that position of like, oh, I've been playing music for 10, 15 years. All of a sudden, like in a blink of an eye, like imagine all these band dudes that have been touring for 15, 20 years. Yeah. And like, what, what would you, what would you, like the way I look at it is what would I do? if I had been playing music for 20 years and all I did was tour and now all of a sudden I have nothing to do like touring, well, I, mean, I can't. I mean, dude, I, all I've done is put on shows for fifth. Well, it's technically 16 years and that, you know, that's, was, why, that's why I started doing this show. started trying to take care of, take better care of myself. You know what I mean? So like, and that's the thing is everyone, you have to think about what, what are you going to do if everything shuts down? Yeah. And we, we have, this is like the perfect learning experience. It is. You're right. And especially because, you know, not everyone is as fortunate as you and I to go get a job in a situation like this. You know, we live in an area right. where there's jobs aplenty. It's not like that everywhere. Jobs aplenty. Sorry, I had to. You just you used that word. It aplenty. Was, it just made me laugh. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, you know what, Travis? This has been a fucking pleasure. I'm so glad you did the show with me. This might be my longest episode yet, honestly. I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it is. Um, but Wouldn't after, shock me. I'm a chatty Kathy. Yeah, well, dude, so am I. You know I love the sound of... You know I'm basically a narcissist. Like, without being... Like, I'm not a real narcissist, but like I do love me the sound of my own voice. That's true. All right, I'll, I'll, re I'll retract. I don't like the term chatty Kathy. I think that's that's a bad one. I, I, uh, I definitely like to hear myself... I think that's a better way to put it. Okay. Um, I said I said I was gonna gonna ignore the chat, Travis, but I think one came through that I think we need to acknowledge here. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. Uh, I will read it out loud for you people listening, not watching. <laughs> Is Travis wearing pants? Actually, yes, I am wearing shorts. I am wearing shorts. They're just super hiked up. But yes, yes. I yes. I am wearing a, a pair of Whitechapel shorts that go along with my Whitechapel tattoo. Yep, yep. And everybody, uh, one of our, one of my good friends, Dan Fonts, he's been on the show before. He asked if Travis was wearing pants, and uh, he, that was Travis's answer. Uh, Dan, you didn't ask me, but uh, I'm actually not wearing pants. I recorded this episode in my boxers because I woke up late today. <laughs> I love that. God, you sound like a dental drill. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Anyways, Travis, thank you for joining me. Everybody watching, listening, tuning in, whatever. Hit that follow, sub, whatever button. I don't give a fuck whichever one it is on whatever fucking platform you're on. Uh, thanks for downloading if you're on a podcast. Travis, thanks for joining me. Everybody, check out Abiotic and The Undying Online Everywhere. Both bands have sick fucking music. Um, Travis is the fucking boy. He's one of my, like... We don't talk as much as we we should, but like he's a person. Like you know, how you have that person where you're like, I can pick up the phone and call you if I need something. Like you're that person, Travis, and that's one of the reasons I fucking love you, boy. So appreciate it, um, everybody else. Uh, I'm Joe Cupcake. Follow me everywhere. Uh, if you don't know how to follow me, Google me. I'm the first five things to pop up. Uh, yes, that's a real really? statement. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. It might only be the first three now, because uh, like someone else. I, I think so. I think. I think. I'm not sure. That's fine. Joel Cupcake. Uh, it's your boy. Okay, so the first thing is it's your boy at Joel Cupcake Twitter. Uh, yep. Joel Cup. Uh, Joel Joel's Cupcakes, which is Twitter. Wait, there's a there's a person there's a there's an actual like business called Joel's Cupcakes. Yes, yes. That's why I'm not. I used to be like all the first Google entries, and then somebody started a business called that. That's why I was saying like I will. I'm not 100 percent sure. That is. That is incredible. Right? Wait a minute. Okay. It, Sean Mott, what does he do? What is he uh, from again? I You've said that name a million times. Oh, he does the Metalcore Nerds podcast. He is a booking agent at Continental with Dan. He uh, does graphic design. He played in the band Ghostic Ship. Uh, they have a sick Juggalo shirt. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Um, there's, yeah. Okay. That would make sense because I like checked my Twitter and I saw Metalcore Star Lord and I'm just like, huh? And then I saw Sean Mott and I'm like, I've seen that name before, but like I've never met the dude. So I unless I have and I didn't know it, which I feel really bad if that was the case. I mean, shit happens, you know what I mean. Um. All right. Well, before I wrap the fucking show, uh, you know, we're gonna raid somebody. Which, for those of you that don't know what that is on Twitch, you can transfer your viewers to someone else. So we're going to do that, and then I'm going to end the show with Travis. So everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, Travis, thanks for being here. Um, everybody, we are going to go raid Zicky Dice. He is a professional wrestler. He does old school gaming on Twitch. He's extremely fucking entertaining. And most importantly, he is my fucking boy. So we're going to do that. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Travis, thank you for being here. Uh, everybody follow Travis. He's at Oh Hey Travis. His link will be on the artwork and in the bio. Both his bands, The Undying and Abiotic. Uh, let's fucking party, boys. Let's fucking go. Thanks for tuning in. And Travis, thanks for fucking being here. It's your boy, Joel Cupcake. It's your boy. That's right.